doing well. If not, as always, I hope it gets better for you. Yes, there's some algae. That's for another video. In this video, we're gonna build some racks. All right, space is cleared. Rack is moved. Time to start on the new racks. So I've got this to work with. So I've got 42 by four by tens. And then we've got, I believe, 72 by four by eights. So these are gonna be the legs. Yes, 10 foot legs. Which is going to be about, yay, tall. It's pretty much going to be the same as how I built them before because it worked great for me in my last house. They're sturdy. They're going to be up there forever. So I like this sort of build. I'm going to stick with it because the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So 48 three quarters, that's for 75s. 36 and a half, that's for 40s. You can see here on the inside cut, it was really, it's really close between the two. So 40s and 75s are super compact when trying to format measurements for a aisle of tanks or just a whole fish room in general. And you can see I need to move the G-Max. And with these measurements, I just took the measurements of the tanks and added a half inch each way. And then anytime I go up, I'm gonna give myself 30 inches between everything because that'll just pretty much line up to where I need it. Unless I do tens or something different. And then when you're going up in spacing with aquariums, it's good to keep about eight to 10 inches. Preferably, I'm going to be at about nine. I'll stop at 30 here. Because you definitely want it to be comfortable with getting into an aquarium. That, and if you get that nice big rock or piece of driftwood you want to get in, you want to be able to put it in there. If you leave just a little gap, yeah, maybe you get your arm in there, but at the same time, you're going to really struggle to get things in and out. And if you got a fish that is a decent size, you ain't even gonna squeeze them in. So good to have some height when it comes to stacking tanks. Now, how many I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need 16th of each of these. So to the 16th. That way we're gonna double the first three rows and then we're gonna go single on the top. And the reason why I'm gonna go single on the top is I don't wanna end up being top heavy. So most of my weight's gonna be on the bottom. And then the stuff I'm gonna put on top is actually gonna be a lot lighter. And if I ever put anything heavy in it, I could always double up later. Cause with how much wood I got, I know it looks like quite a bit it's not gonna be enough and this stuff's not cheap just one of those is 10 bucks a piece just like throwing ten dollar bills but i gotta do what you gotta do it's gonna be worth it definitely gonna be worth it. these weren't bad though got them at five dollars a piece home depot too those are nice ones if you want wood home depot that's where that's where you go and remember the reason why it's shorter than what they are is because i had to take three inches off for the wood in between or the wood on the outside got the boards cut mark now time Time to sand them should have enough for five racks three forties two seventy fives which chewed that down real fast now time to cut the plywood that's all the scrap i had left for them cutting 10 for the 75s which took two plywood had to cut them at 48 each you can see here in my measurements it's 48 and three quarters but these plywood this plywood comes in 48 inches so you would really only get like two pieces out of a full board or you could take the three quarters off and i went ahead and took the three quarters off and i'll show you why because we already added a half inch extra to begin with the measurement between the glass is actually right at 48. The trim right here adds the extra, so I'll still be supporting the glass. And since I'm going five high, I need five per rack. Or you could do the standard three. But at 19, you are able to get five boards with just that much scrap left out of one piece of plywood. It's not bad. Good usage of wood. Then, of course, I'm going to have to sand all that and paint all that. Now, for more of the time-consuming process, painting. Got some boards here on some saw horses to help me have more space to paint all this because weather here in Florida, you never know if it's going to rain. I can't really be outside. So you can see there's a lot of paint. There's a lot to paint. This is for 275 racks. Five high. That's for 240 racks. Still got those for the other 40 rack and here i'm using the rust-oleum exterior indoor outdoor gloss black i should have just bought a gallon but i prefer exterior paint that way it'll last a lot longer makes it more waterproof <laughs> Next. Got these painted. Time to roll them over. 
And I know some of these sides will be hidden, but I like to paint them all because it just keeps things out of the wood, whether it be bugs or whatever. And the reason why I do it like this is just to keep the fingerprints off as well. And it'd be sticking to this board, then you'd have to peel it off. The paint job wouldn't be as nice, but this is two coats. Not bad for two coats. Got that gloss. The reason why I picked the gloss is it just helps keep dust and particles off of it. Rag bed, shinier, smoother. Doesn't smudge as easily as like a flat wood. All right, so now you can see I got those all done. But I went ahead and did a third coat on these and look at the difference. You can see big difference. You can still barely see the wood in here, like almost to the point like it doesn't really matter so much. But then this looks so much better. It's gonna take a little more paint, a little more time to do three coats, but I think it'll be worth it in the long run because this is for the long run. Might as well take those extra hours to save more time in the future. You just know you did it better. Makes you feel good. I am really happy with the third coat. Glad I did it now. Nice and shiny. Brand new. Let's do those. And those racks. And these racks really are very handy as you can see. While these cure a little more. They're still good but I don't want to stack them on top of each other because they might just get sticky and stuck to each other. So this will help cure them overnight more while I work on getting these painted. Getting all those. Alright, time for the next round. Oh, those over there. It's gonna take a while. Still got all these to do. And those. And those. So yeah, painting's gonna take a few days. All right, finishing final coats off that. Time to get these painted, which I'm gonna have to take these outside to do that. These things are way too long for in here. At least it's not gonna rain. Well, it's beautiful out there, but you're gonna melt. So I had to bring them in. It's gonna take a little more time to do these, but at least I'm not gonna die. That and when you're low on paint, it's no fun trying to race getting them painted in the sun because it dries it out real fast. And since I am low on paint, waiting on some, that's why I'm only painting four of these. That way I can go ahead and get a rack started and built while I wait for the paint to come in. Not the flow I wanted, but it'll keep flowing. Ooh, look at that. Just need to clean the uh, glass. Oh, I can't wait to get these up and out. Look at fish. All right, now that I got most of it painted here, time to start building them. Get this area cleaned out here. And boom, all cleared. Got it cleaned up. Now with these drop cloths, these fabric drop cloths, look like they don't do that great. Should stick with plastic or a tarp. Still bled through a little bit. You can see it though, it ain't gonna matter what this for. But for you guys, hopefully it'll save you guys some heartaches if you try that later. All right, so I messed up on the measurement of these. Whoa. Since I'm going two boards in the front and back like that, I should have took six off, not three, because four, four times one and a half is gonna be six, so these should have been 13. So, but not end of the world. I just measure three inches off, then on my saw, I'm gonna tape right where I need to put it. So then I cut it, get what I get, and then boom, boom. So then repeat. Just line it up there. That way you don't have to go through the time of measuring each one. All right, so got those cut. In a perfect world, I'd paint them, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. It's not really gonna matter for where they're at. Since the front braces and back braces will hold most of the weight. Since most of the weight will be in the corner here, as you can see. These are for stability, helping hold it. And I like to have two in the middle. That way I can hang stuff. I'll have water lines. I've already got it organized for my squares. So on the bottom, I'm only going to use three because I'm not going to use it to hang lines. And then the second and third, I'm going to have water lines and lights hanging off of them. And over here, you can see I kept the long ones because these are actually, I'm going to have a single front and back, but we'll also get lights and lines. And then another rack. All right, so first you're going to want to build your squares like these, like this. What I like to do, take the front and back and go ahead and pile a hole two holes boom boom that's for those and that way they'll be all ready go ahead and do all the ones you need up because they'll always be in those two spots where you're going to drill and this will help you from breaking your wood and get a bit just a little smaller than the screws you're using i'm using the number nine i want to use anything less these are the screws i'm working with this time these are two and a half inch so just right under two two by four worth and size number nine. I like the T bits. And I also have some three inch that I'm gonna be working with on the side to connect the longer beams with. 
which I could use the two and a half, but I already have the three, so might as well use them up because I'm not going to need them. Well, I say that now. And you can see I'm conveni conveniently right next to my vacuum. That way I can keep my area clean after I drill these holes. And I am consistently drilling the holes high and low. That way the screws, when they come in on this piece, on the other piece, there won't be any screws in the way, you'll see. But for this piece, I got a lot of meat here for these to go through. And the top screw is going to land on that other one. They weren't, it's not going to shear, but it's going to be solid. We'll leave it some meat. So I got all those drilled out, the first front and back, pilot hold. You can see these are still here. Don't need to do nothing with those. But what I like to do here after I get them all pilot hole, get my two and a half inch screw, just set them in there like so. You just run through it without holding my phone. And you can do a 75 or 40 without having to double it up, but just for stability, durability reasons, I got it. Because we could get hurricanes around here and I want them things to hopefully hold. I don't know. I like to drill them in a little bit. That way you're not struggling when you're trying to hold it together with your screws. They'll be nice, placed, and set, ready for you. Now we're ready to put our front piece on. Good to get these burrs off. Careful with that too, if you don't have gloves on. All right, got our first one. First thing we're gonna wanna make sure that it's flush and plumb here at the top and on the sides on these two. You could use a square. It's really not that necessary, to be honest. And don't worry about leveling it yet either. So just start screwing your squares together. Just make sure this is nice and flush for... Actually, I'm gonna turn that around. I got a good side on the front side. And sometimes it will lay differently when you rotate it. It's not doing that now, but see, nice and... Best thing to do is use your fingers when figuring that out, too. And then screw it in. Keep your thumb down. That way the uh, screw doesn't move it. Take it kind of slow. And that first one. Now, I didn't go all the way in yet. Not until I get that second one in. Nice and clean. And work your way around. Now this one's a little warped, so there's a gap between this and the bottom one. And you could either flip this around and see if it'll match up, luckily. But if it doesn't, go ahead, drive it in, drive down through there, then come back off of it. Then work your way around, then come back to it and put it where it needs to be. So like I mentioned before, this isn't gonna have a whole lot of support with this screw under here. So if there is a little gap there to keep it square and flush on the bottom of the ground and level, how it should be and when I say level even you can see if I were to screw that in more it would come off the floor so you want it flat on the floor if it comes up like that then it can get a little wonky later on so you can leave that gap and this one's nice and flat but even if there is a little rock or some give way don't freak out because you can fix that as you're using it up the rack when we actually go to level it up when we put it on its legs and with this middle one you can measure out center or just kind of find the middle since it's going to be hidden anyways it's just kind of holding it together a little bit just pilot hole and screw through and then for the ones above it since this is the bottom one the ones above we'll put it right here we'll put one right here and one right here instead that way we got something to hang on also with these screws you want to make sure you get them in all the way for the front plate that goes in for the piece that's going to go on top of them. Now I had this one where it wanted to sink lower. You can see there's a little gap here, but this would sit up just a little higher. I want to go ahead and make sure I got one side just totally flush and level. That way there's no bumps and humps for when I put the top piece on. Because what's underneath it won't matter so much. And I also had a gap that was stubborn, so I had to screw here, screw there, little by little, just tightening it up to get it to squeeze in right. So really listen and read what you're doing when you're doing this, and it'll save you a lot of heartache. And when I drill for these middle ones, I make sure not to go all the way through into here, or that's going to guide your screw. So you only want to drill into about this far, right before it punches out. That way it'll be easier to get it to where you want it and not where it just having a drill it is important to take these off because you don't have a flat connection with that screw then the shear could get to it easier there's a gap caused by something like that 
Make sure it's nice and flat. And yes, after doing it this way, I know some may feel kind of more comfortable doing it with the square, but in my opinion, this is just a waste of time. You don't even need it for this project. If you naturally flush and plumb it up, it'll square itself. I also put a T in the top right corner here. That way I know where these will line up and which side is nice and flush and plumb. Now I did have this one super wonky. Just the way it laid out and the gap would have been way too much. So still don't worry about something this wonky as long as you're flush and plumb at the top and on the sides like I showed. Like I have mentioned, you can fix that on the legs going up. 40 or 75 per rack. This is how many side pieces you need. 11, 13, 8 sixes. So 11, 13, 8 sixes is what I got for the side piece. For one rack, five shelves. And this is what I mean. The whole process for all this, for sure. I'm trying to do five at a time. Worst part is when I build these up, I'm gonna run out of space to build. So I'm gonna definitely have to move these tanks. Now this rack of shelving is not the fastest, not the easiest, and not the cheapest to build, but I tell you what, this will last you a really, really long time. You'll be able to sleep at night, and even if you're not holding fish tanks, the weight that these things can hold is just amazing. One rack done. Got three of them built, but like I said, running out of space. All right, time to put the rack together. You can see I got screws up there already. I had screws down here. So just like I did with those boards earlier, put screws in, drilled them, pre-drilled them, and put screws in them. Top and bottom, that way, especially those, you don't have to deal with, that's nice. Just kind of set them somewhere, boop, boop. But got that leveled, big level, got those on. Made sure I'm on a flat surface. That way it doesn't rock later too much. If it does, just get a shim. But what I did is I measured up from 30 because I like to have at least 10 to 8 inches in between the tank and the bottom shelf. And that's going to give me that. Plus, I want to kind of stay in line with all these racks that I've already built. And then I used some chalk. That's my 30 mark. Grabbed a 2x4 for a template so I knew the area I needed my screws. And since I went on the outside, with my last screws, it's kind of tight there anyway. Try to stick more to the inside since the last screws were more towards here. I'll just go through, go through, get these in first. Go with my drill. Always try to make sure I get my screws in somewhat even, as even as I can. That way when you put them in, they don't get all wonky and take the board elsewhere. Now I'll get my next piece, my drill. Try to balance it all since I'm by myself. But as long as I got this lined up to where I need it, try to get it squared up near that mark on the bottom. Got to get one in, tack it up. This one's got a weird edge, so I got to go a little forward. Check my height, looking pretty good. But I like that flush or not. That ain't flush enough for me. I don't like that. I'm going to put it in, I'm going to put it in right. You know what I mean? All right. So I had to start with the hardest edge. Alright, that's flush. And next steps work my way around with this level. Which all I really need is that level there. It doesn't really matter so much as Oh, this is level. When that happens. It's looking pretty level. Well it was. So it might help to have somebody help you. I'll tell you that much. Huh. Nice and level. Work it to the other side. And I don't worry about those white marks too much after going around. So it's for really guesstimates. But nice and level. And on the last corner, I like to double check that one and that one. Just that way I know I'm on the right track. You can still see I haven't screwed in the rest of these. That way I can maneuver it if I need to. Get a level, get the last one in here. We made ourselves around, all the way around. Looking pretty good. Now we go around and screw them on. And there you go, shelf's on. Now we gotta work our way up. I'll tell you what, it gets interesting up that high on a ladder. 
that's it. And if you notice, I don't have the plywood on any of these yet. I wait to do that until I actually set them in place because if not, it gets heavy. Er. All right, just like last time, you wanna make sure this is smooth too. Good thing about the top ones on this one, they're not as heavy, not as thick. Cause I'm not actually gonna put tanks up there. I'm gonna put plants. That's how you want it to look. We got five of them now. Pretty sweet, getting some racks. All right, now that we got these five built, still gotta clean this. I have to clear this up to get underneath here for the next rack. And we also gotta find a home for all this and this. Cause we're gonna start working on this back wall. And to help get some of this moved, we're gonna go ahead and set the rack. And we can get this plywood out of the way too. Now with getting these set, I like to use levels up it. That way I kind of know how it's sitting. Sitting great here in front. This is kind of wonky here on the bottom. Way wonky here. Then as it goes up, it's settled a bit. And of course I checked around it. Everything else is level. This one's just kind of wonky. I'm not really sure why. And then same with, then same with the bottom here. It must be the way it's sitting. But as long as the legs are, there is some twist and movement into it. Not much, but enough that it can kind of change things. So what we'll do is I like to use shims, but I'm not gonna shim this rack. I'm actually gonna shim this plywood after I get the tank on. So we'll level the tank. We'll let that be because whenever I go to put the plywood on, should be that I only have to put one back here in the corner and then that tank will be leveled, which will kind of hold and level things off. And since I got it where I want it, might as well go ahead and start putting these in. Uh, a little better. There. And usually I would go here, but it was kind of tight there, so I could find a gap there. Just went that way. Also, make sure you're checking around the whole thing as well. Double checking after you put your shim in. Then go ahead and double check it after you put your tank in too. The tank should be level if this is level. And since these racks are gonna be right next to each other, I am making a pilot hole here so I can go ahead and screw these together. That way it's all one cohesive system. If you bump into it, you're not worried about that's gonna go flying. Like you're gonna have to move the whole thing, which you don't wanna knock that whole thing over. But it'd take a lot more to do than yourself. You give it a lot more stability, be super sturdy. And as I screw these in, I wanna make sure I don't push or pull too much because I did already level that. I should have probably put all these together, then level it from there. So I'm gonna wait on that one until I get this one over here to do the plywood. Loving it already. Can't wait to get tanks in it. And it's all fastened together. We got one on each side, all the way up, all the way down. Just right underneath. That way you can't really see it as much. Also here. So it's all actually one rack now. And these, since they're really close here, just angled them up, shot them up towards that way. And made sure to level it out on my way. Now to get some tops. Went through and leveled out these bottom ones. Now we can finally move these tanks. So I've got to empty these and move them over here. I didn't screw this down yet. I kind of wanted to screw it down just so I want to like move. At the same time, that also exposes the wood and water could get into it, which not really a big deal. I never had a problem with it before, but I may try to leave it unscrewed this time. Cause once the weight's on it, it's on it. And by the time I put the back part on and this part, this thing's gonna be hurricane proof. But hopefully we never have to test that. And of course the bucket's buried. I guess I can go through there. All right, time to start emptying it. These are exciting times. And I should get this off the cart since these are down on the ground. I wanna get as much out as possible. Ah, uh, much better. And I am gonna go ahead and leave the rope fish in there. He had to climb up there. Oh, the garden right. eater. Right. As you can see, it can hold a human and some tanks. And if you like this video, I got more build videos coming. Plus, planning on taking a field trip to some springs and some wild waters around here. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how I moved some of these bigger tanks, like the 75s with substrate, fish, and water in them. And much, much more to come. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button. That'd be 
be much appreciated. And I hope you all have a good one. Thank you so much for watching and the awesome support. I appreciate you all. Until next time, everybody. Peace. Have a great one. I'll see you on the next one.